Boris Becker, with no room for error, serves 1-3 in the fourth. Three games to one. I told you that Edberg's father banked is a detective, but when he went to Australia for the first time to play the juniors, had an English language interview, they said, what does your father do? He said, my father's a criminal. He meant K-R-I-M-I-N-O-L, which in Swedish is like a criminologist or something. And they said, what? Oh, what a story. But then it was... <laughs> First of all, he's just about to steal the championship from Boris Becker if it continues his level of play. Criminal act, all right, against Boris, who has never lost on this court. 14 and 0. <laughs> and Boris, best be careful not to think too far ahead about how he's going to break Edberg. He has to hold his own, or he's really in trouble. Down one break in the fourth. Graf and Sabatini won their service game, and now it's the Soviets serving 6-7 in the final set. Devils champions last year were Claudia Kota Kilch and Helena Sokova beat uh, Betsy Nagelson and Liz Smiley. So we'll have a new ladies doubles champion. Just wide or long 15, rather. 1530. Flack and Seguso have repeated their title. We'll have a new men's champion, obviously. New ladies titleist in Steffi Graf. And we definitely will have a new mixed doubles champion since Bates and Dury, the British team, were beaten early. disturbed Boris because that ball was just going. That was a zinger. <laughs> Two break points for Edberg to go 4-1. After losing the first set 6-4, Hedberg took the tie break in the second, won the third 6-4, and now has a 3-1 lead in the fourth. What would we do without electricity? Like, uh, for example, if we didn't have electricity, uh, if, if, you're in, uh, if you're in a bathroom, and you have to go, you have to go, you have to go, and <laughs> there's no light, and you have to go in the dark. Electricity. There's no substitute. Tracy Austin, who certainly had her moments on center court in that pinafore dress and the pigtails. At 14, she was a semifinalist in 1980. Lost to Ivan Gulagan, who won the tournament. And this Saturday, Ivan Gulagan 
the last 19-year-old to win here at Wimbledon will be inducted into the International Tennis Hall of Fame at Newport. So the bad news for Becker, he's down two breaks in the fourth, down two sets to one, and he's unable to get many points off Edberg's serve. Considers this his championship. And now 15. Becker throwing up a good lob. Sets himself up for this. His loss last year on court one, not here. And he says, Peter Doohan is very important to me. He beat me, he showed I was human. Welcome live breakfast at Wimbledon. In case you're just joining us, Stefan Edberg leads Boris Becker two sets to one and 4-1 in the fourth here at center court. Edberg trying to become the first Swede since Bjorn Borg to win this treasured title. Borg's last championship year, of course, was 1980. McEnroe beat Borg after five in a row in 81. playing impeccable tennis. That's the adjective for it, Dick, because now here's a short ball that might have been trouble, but wasn't. Meanwhile, the women's doubles championship being contested on court two, it's seven all between Sevchenko Zverova against Graf Sabatini. He just isn't this He's up against the one-man firing squad in Becker, but... 14-15. A point from 5-1. Five, please. Share a title to Australians, but perhaps under the circumstances has never played two better sets than these last two against Boris Becker. And now it's Becker hanging on the ropes, trying to serve and find some miracle here, as he just hasn't come close to any chance to break Ed Bergen the last two sets. And he trails 1-5 in the fourth. Thank you. This then becomes championship game for Edberg. Just to underline how well Stefan Edberg has played in the last two sets, he has com committed three unforced errors. Three against a man who's just drilling shots at him. 15. Well, the weather has extended our coverage to Monday, and Becker looking at, there you get an idea of the kind of wind currents around center court as a wrapper of sorts being flown around the court all the way to the other end. Now, he's trying everything to throw off Edberg's concentration. Comedy routine, hitting the ball after a paper wrapper. He keeps it alive twice with four hands. <laughs> he is hot. Five, please. They're in a towel off on court two, and Groff and Sabatini, 8 7, held their serve in the final set. 
30-15. That's the eighth double fault for Becker. serve it out the way he's returning so where do you serve now if you're Boris Becker you dare put it on the backhand and the forehand has come alive now done it right at him I guess and hope He feels you can just sense it that he can get to every 22-year-old Swede as he serves 5-2 the championship on his racket. In fact, he has two chances to serve for the title. And while the Australian Open Grand Slams were important marks on his report card for Edberg, this is the moment for him. He won it five years ago, the boys, the juniors title here at Wimbledon. He beat a guy named Boris Becker in the first round, 6-2, 6-4. Becker was 15, and Edberg 17 at the time. And when he won that boys title, the word circulated around the All England Club, bud, that here's a young guy that's going to win the big show someday. And then he disappointed for a while, and suddenly he has matured under that man's leadership, Tony Picard. Son. Well, people do expect too much of young tennis players. And don't give them time to mature, just as too much will certainly be expected of Andre Agassi. Just as too much was expected from Boris Becker after two Wimbledons. But Edberg, I think, never lost faith in himself. He's a quiet, rather shy young man, although with the rest of the Swedes, he's known as a good-time guy. Thank you. And we saw what a great smile he has. He's a handsome guy. Serves for the title. What a place to be in. South End, Royal Box. performance by Pat Cash last year at the net, his incredible volleys, but Edberg's been his match today. He began to turn it all around against May Chirsch. Down a break in the third set. And down two sets. from victory. is not very happy to coach Picard in the background, in the back row. Yeah! Well, Becker is made 
with some solid hard returns finally gets a point. champion of Wimbledon. Ball boys and ball girls forming the corridor through which the Duke and Duchess of Kent, I believe she is not here today, had other obligations on this Monday as of course no one planned to be celebrating the men's final at center court on this 4th of July, a Monday. It had not happened that way for 66 years since an incredible 1922 year that I barely recall where it seemed to rain every day. The president of the All England Club. This procedure began in 1949. Prior to that, the champions were presented either in the Royal Box or later. And then Ted Schroeder, they called him Lucky, from La Jolla, California, Ted is here watching, was the first to be presented the men's championship trophy at center court on the court. That was 1949. My first night managing 
third time. But he certainly made the new champion play well. It wasn't a bad match for Becker. This young guy from Sweden was just every point. job and the total presentation of these championships. The eyes of a young man that seemed to be looking already ahead to next year. ceremony, the introduction of the chair umpire, Jerry Armstrong, one of the very best. Hutt Collins has made his way down behind the backdrop that uh, protects the court from the entrance back into the club, and of course we'll interview the winner and loser if that's possible now. the referee to take a bow. Tough time for the referee this uh, weather plague final weekend. Well, we've seen players leap over the net when they've won it. We've seen them like Borg fall to his knees and Edberg with that final shot was knocked on his back and just stayed there and celebrated. Here's that final shot when it goes into the net. Edberg makes that tough volley and another and then ready for the blast from Becker. It isn't there. <laughs> Becker comes over the net to congratulate his foe today. And when you see that smile, it makes you hunger for more. But the stoic sweet Edberg has his place now in the history of Wimbledon. match point was really a, a microcosm of the entire championship for Stefan Edberg. He just would not miss a volley no matter how tough. Look at that right off the top of the net. Still able to save it. Now top spin and he just does reach another one. Forcing Becker to make shot after shot and here he loads up and going to hit right at him. Saved by the net cord. And Stefan Edberg a fallen winner. When you look at him, it was hard to understand what Tony Picard, his coach, said the other day in the press conference that uh, Edberg showed he has a fire in his belly. Well, he hides it well and releases it through wonderful shot making. And the, the name of this game is serve and volley. And Edberg has underlined it against a man who, who knows those lessons. Callum standing by will talk to the two participants. So the British have not had a representative in the men's final for 50 years since Bunny Austin lost to Don Budge in Budge's Grand Slam year, but uh, they have an adopted champion here today. <laughs> Becker wanted to get just one little touch of that, just in case. He wants to remember for next year. But Edberg, who lives here in London, and he said, I'm afraid that uh, my anonymity will be lost. If I ever win Wimbledon, you'll be not be able to walk the streets as an unknown. And the photographers, uh, the professionals, as well as the fans around center court all asking for another pose. And 
Edberg enjoying his moment. Meanwhile, out on court two, just quickly, we can tell you that Kraut and Sabatini on serve lead Savchenko and Zvereva 9-8. There's court two. And that point going to Graf Sabatini. That's Larissa Savchenko. Very strong doubles player. And Graf trying to win a pair of championships. It's Zvereva serving 40-30 to Sabatini. And now Deuce. The Soviet team has had a couple of chances to win the championship, but have been broken. And uh, now the two players, Edberg and Becker, leave center court. We'll keep you abreast of the women's doubles results. 6-4, or actually 4-6, 7-6, at Berg, and here's Bud Collins. What is that? <laughs> Boris, we've met here before under happier circumstances, yeah. I suppose. You won the first set. How did he get away from you? I think I had a very important point when I had three all and break point, and uh, I missed a chance, and from then on, you know, we were very, very close in the tiebreaker. He had those two shots where he just went for it in the way and in, and I think from then on, I uh, was a little bit uh, not uh, concentrating Nervous? well. No, no, not, not just pumping up enough in the beginning of the third set, and then he broke me in. From then on, he was playing under, uh, with a lot of uh, con confidence, and uh, I was playing uh, worse and worse. Could you feel it slipping away from you? I thought uh, the second set uh, was very important, and when I lost that, I said, oh my God, what's happening now? And what was happening? Well, I think, first of all, he uh, really played uh, better passing shots than me. I had a lot of problems with my backhand, especially in the passing shots, and, and when uh, you don't make him, then it's difficult to break. Okay, you were serving very well to his forehand in the early stages, then it seemed to pick up. Did you get that feeling that everything was working for him? Yeah, you know, once you are you're in that stage, you know, you are, you're winning the second set, you're behind, and then you're up a break, and then you're sort of right on emotions, and uh, I know what's like that. Well, you beat the champion, you beat the number one player in the world, you didn't win this one. enough. I, I think enough. we'll see you again, Boris yeah. Becker. Thank you. Thank you. And here he is, the champion. Of course, London will claim him now. He's from Kensington. Congratulations, Thank Stefan. You. Thank you very much. It's, uh, it's very hard for, for me to believe that I really won Wimbledon, and uh, it's a fantastic feeling right now. Um, after all the rain we've had and all the waiting we've been How hard through, was that? It's been very, very hard. And uh, we, we haven't been able to eat properly, or you just have to rest and wait for it, and they tell you to play, and then it rains. So it's, it's been very hard for us. Stefan, a few feet away from here, you were down two sets to Milos made yeah. cheers that was all over then wasn't it what yeah. happened to you uh, i don't know it's hard to say but uh, when i look back i mean i i just stayed in the match i, I fought very well and uh, i was very very close to lose that match so i think i gained a lot of confidence by winning that match now you're down a set in this match yeah have, that, are you aware people have said this guy is not a very good competitor yeah. he hits the ball well but not a very easy he gets down have you been aware of those I things think, i think they got it wrong all all of them and uh, that makes me feel very good and because there is a lot of fighting spirit inside of me. Maybe you can't tell, but it's in there, and it's been uh, it's been very nice to prove that to a lot of people and to myself, of course. He was killing you, serving to your forehand. How did you straighten out your forehand? Uh, I think the the different came uh, when I won the second set. Then I then I knew I was back in the match, and I started to move a lot better, and I. I started really to concentrate on the ball as hard as I could and, uh, and the ball get bigger and bigger. I mean, I felt like I couldn't miss it at times and that's a great feeling when you play like that. You're famous now. Are you upset about that? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Take a look. Here is the champion, Stefan Edberg. Congratulations. Thank you. Well played. Dick? Thank you, bud. We'll look forward to his return next year as the holder of the Wimbledon title. Stefan Edberg, a charming young guy indeed. This is simply a reminder that the upcoming three-day weekend is also a three-night weekend. Shouldn't your night belong to Michelob? 
comprehensive health services and protection at an affordable cost. That's what one of America's strongest insurance, financial, and health service experts offers you. All backed by 52 years of health service expertise that covers over 8 million Americans. It's one of the most dramatic developments in health care today. From the travelers, you're better off under the umbrella. When you think about it, there's nothing like a 4th of July night. The fireworks. The tap works. And you don't have to. Shouldn't your night belong to make a little light? A promotional fee has been paid to NBC by United Airlines. Rededicated to giving you the service you deserve. Come fly the friendly skies. Breakfast at Wimbledon Live has been brought to you by Michelob. One taste will tell you why the night belongs to Michelob. By the Travelers, one of America's most experienced financial experts. You're better off under the umbrella. By AT&T, the right choice. And by BMW, the ultimate driving machine. To arrange a thorough test drive, phone your nearest BMW dealer. And so this 4th of July comes to an end at Center Court in Wimbledon. First time in 66 years, the men's title decided on this Monday. And Stefan Edberg couldn't wait. And did he play magnificently, bud? Well, he tried the Bjorn Borg, <laughs> and he couldn't handle it. He fell over, but that's all right. <laughs> <laughs> Stefan Edberg in four sets beats Boris Becker for the championship from all of us on NBC Sports. Goodbye from London. <laughs>